Hey y'all, what is up? Kizby here. So today's video was actually going to be a short highlighting one specific interaction, but I decided to extend it out to talk about a few different ones and get a bit more in depth on those as well. We are going to be covering a few small tips and some of the finer points of card effects that you will no doubt encounter on your Fool Wanderers playing adventures. But before we get into all that, don't forget to drop this video a like, subscribe to the channel for even more, and if you want to help support the channel that little bit extra, check out the link in the description to grab yourself a Keys BTCG exclusive playmat. The playmats are custom designed by me for the channel and everything from those goes a long way to helping us out. So let's dive right into it and talk about our good friend Dimension Shifter and how he interacts with Called by the Grave. So this actually came up in a game recently and while I thought it was pretty commonly known, it turned into a judge call so I wanted to cover it here. All right, let's start with the basics. Chain link one, dimension shifter. Chain link two, called by the grave, targeting that dimension shifter. Called by resolves, shifter is now negated, easy. His activated effect of altering the game state said everything banished never goes off. You attempt to shifter again next turn, but cards named dimension shifter are still affected by called by the grave, so no go. Turn two, those two elements are still hitting the grave. We'll come back to this a little bit later, but let's change the scenario around a little bit now. You go first, fire off Dimension Shifter, do your turn, and pass. Turn two, Shifter's lingering effect is still active. Air quotes around lingering effect because that's not a technical term. More accurately, the game state is still altered by Dimension Shifter's already resolved activated effect, but for ease of speaking, I will be referring to that as a lingering effect. Draw phase, your opponent slams down a call by the grave targeting Shifter. It resolves, Shifter is banished. They now go to main phase one, summon Rhino Heart, and send a Tyralman to Graveyard. So, this does not work this way. What would happen is they summon Rhino Heart, and the Tyralman in question is banished instead. D Shifter from turn one, we'll call him Prime Shifter at this point, has already resolved and created an altered game state. Called by the Grave negates the activated effects of the card it banished, and cards that share its name, but Dimension Shifter's activated effect has long since resolved already, created kind of a, and again, air quotes, lingering effect that Called by the Grave has no bearing on. I'm quoting what the judge said to us, including the air quotes around lingering effect. The long and short is, if Dimension Shifter resolves, Called by has no bearing on that Prime Shifter's effect for the duration of it. However, I said Prime Shifter. Let's reset the scenario. Turn one, you shifter. Again, we're going to call this one prime shifter. Turn two, your opponent called buys your prime shifter. Turn three, you can actually use a new shifter, who we will be calling new shifter, since your graveyard is empty and the altered game state prime shifter's effect created is over. You can't shifter under a shifter because funny enough, he sends himself to graveyard for cost. Now you use new shifter. That shifter will be negated because of the altered game state created by Called by the Grave in which the activated effects of cards named Dimension Shifter are negated. And now we go into turn 4, new shifter will not have any bearing on this turn despite the fact that we are no longer in the altered game state created on turn 2 by Called by the Grave because on turn 3, new shifter's effect was negated and he could never alter the game state so things will go to the graveyard. Quote unquote lingering effect is a pretty easy way to look at it, but it is more correct to say Dimension Shifter's activated effect alters the game state and makes the whole scenario where a turn two called by the grave not canceling out a turn one Dimension Shifter make a lot more sense, since D Shifter already resolved and its effect is done despite leaving the game state altered for an additional turn. Next thing I want to cover is a quick tip regarding Shifter, called by the grave, and hand traps. I've actually covered this before, but it feels like a good enough time as any to mention it again, and it will actually segue into our next card as well. Keep in mind, unless something happens to them, cards remain on the field until the chain they are on resolves. So let's say you open Pot of Prosperity, Dimension Shifter, and Called by the Grave. While I haven't seen Ash in a very long time, nor have I played Called by the Grave in my build in a little bit, let's say you want to play around Ash Blossom correctly. The proper order to do this in is go Pot of Prosperity, then if your opponent doesn't resolve, toss down Dimension Shifter Chain Link 2. Since cards remain on field until the chain resolves, even though you played a normal spell, Chain Link 1, Shifter is still live despite Prosperity being bound for the graveyard at the end of the chain. But now, let's add Ash Blossom into the mix. Chain Link 1, Prosperity. Chain Link 2, Ash. 
Ash discards for cost, so it's in your opponent's graveyard now. You can go Chain Link 3, called by the grave, targeting the Ash that is already in the graveyard. And then finally, on Chain Link 4, Shifter. Chain resolves, Shifter resolves first, called by banishes that Ash Blossom, Chain Link 2, Ash Blossom is negated, and Chain Link 1, Prosperity resolves. Pretty cool. But now, let's change that order ever so slightly. You use Dimension Shifter first, then you use Prosperity. Your opponent chains Ash Blossom. Because Shifter is live, Ash goes directly to being banished. Remember, Ash is not like Ogre or Droll, which explicitly say they need to go to Graveyard as part of their cost. Ash simply needs to be discarded and doesn't care where she ends up. So now, Chain Link 2, she is directly banished. You cannot target her with Call by the Grave, and therefore you lose the Chain Link 1 Prosperity Excavate. Just a quick minor turn optimization I want to mention if you are running Called by the Grave in your builds. The last thing I want to mention regarding Shifter is Dimension Shifter versus Artifact Lancia. Now, Lancia has mostly fallen off as the de facto counter to Flanderies, but I got hit with it the other day, so I'm gonna bring it up. Lancia, first and foremost, can activate and resolve under Dimension Shifter. Since its activation cost is only tributing itself and it does not matter where it ends up. Second, Lancia will always supersede Dimension Shifter's effect for the turn that it's active. This is because Dimension Shifter is altering the game state in a way where you take a different action in place of one you would normally take, but Artifact Lancia alters the game state in a way where you cannot take an action. An infinite effect that tells you to take an action instead of another action conflicts with an effect that says you cannot take an action. The one that says you cannot take an action always supersedes the one that says do something instead. However, it is important to note Lancia does not negate Shifter's effect, it just re-alters the game state on top of it. So if turn 1 you Dimension Shifter and your opponent chains Lancia, Shifter's effect of creating an altered game state still resolves, then Lancia's altered game state basically takes priorities over Shifter. So once the turn ends, since Lancia's altered game state essentially stacked a new rule over Shifter's and that new rule is now gone, Shifter's altered game state is still live until the end of turn 2, so everything will be banished on turn 2. Next up, let's talk evenly matched. So the first one is a general tip for everyone. I don't see this often, but it's still more than it should be happening. Evenly matched counts the cards at resolution, not activation. So in a standard going second evenly scenario, you drop evenly from hand, chain link 1, Chain starts to resolve at resolution of evenly, it counts the one card you control, said evenly matched, and your opponent has to match you there. If your opponent does something in response on chain link 2 that would remove evenly from the field, now at chain link 1, evenly is gone. It counts you at zero cards, meaning your opponent now has to banish everything they have left in their control to match you at zero. Granted, it's one card of difference, and there are cases where you might want to do this if it's something like a Divine Arsenal Double Isaias putting all your Eldritch Traps in graves so that they don't get banished face down, but more often than not, it just ends in an upset opponent who didn't realize it resolved like this. I'm sure most of you are aware of how this works, but I just wanted to toss in a mention. Next is that Evenly Matched cannot banish tokens face down. So if your opponent has a token on the field, that is mandatory for them to be the card that they keep and they must banish everything else they control. If they have multiple tokens, they will keep all of them despite them having more cards than you once the chain finishes resolving because the condition of tokens not being able to be banished face down supersedes Evenly's effect of making your opponent banish until they control the same number of cards as you. The rest of Evenly Matched will resolve properly though. The next thing is Evenly Matched versus our level 1 birds. I've mentioned this many times, but since we're on the topic, I'll just say really quickly, the small bird's condition of being banished face up when they would leave the field in any way supersedes evenly matched effect to cause them to be banished face down. This also applies to something like Ryza spinning them back into the hand or the deck or something sending them directly to a location. As long as that small bird is face up on the field, it will be banished face up instead. One other thing I want to mention in reference to these small birds not related to evenly, if they are flipped face down and then removed via effect from the field, they will go to wherever they are directed to. However, if they are flipped face down then attacked and destroyed by battle, they are banished face up because they flip during damage calculation before they are destroyed. 
Next, again, general note regarding evenly matched, but very good to know. It supersedes any unaffected by card effects style protection because evenly matched does not affect cards on the field. Rather, it causes the opponent to take an action, so it affects them. Mentioning this here because this type of affecting the player effect will be mentioned again later in this video. And lastly, the tip, evenly matched isn't once per turn. So if your opponent negates the first one, the activation, or just the effect itself, or if they create a situation where they rebuild their field in the battle phase, but after evenly resolves, this exact scenario came up when my opponent super polyed two tier element monsters in response to evenly, causing them to return to the field on a new chain after evenly finished resolving. You can go ahead and use a second one from your hand if you hard open two. Pretty neat. All right, let's talk about Predaplant Dragostopelia. So Dragostopelia has two effects, one ignition and one continuous effect. Its ignition effect is to target a face-up monster controlled by the opponent and place a predator counter on it, and then it becomes level one if it is level two or higher. This is specifically part of the effect that it is all connected has never actually been relevant. However, I did get to turn an Apex Avion into a Relinquished Animal once, which forced the Dragostopelia to activate again on my turn. It was placed in the link column, which freed me up to make an access code. So just remember that it does do that level modulation. The continuous effect is that it negates the activated effects of any opponent's monster with a predator counter on it. So the keyword there is activated. The simple one first. This does nothing to barrier stature of the storm winds besides change its level. This has come up before where my opponent put a counter on barrier then wanted to special summon, but since barrier statue is a continuous effect, not activated, no dice. Now let's talk about Mpen versus Dragostopelia. Mpen has three effects, one trigger, one ignition, both considered activated effects, and a continuous effect. The continuous effect, as I'm sure most of you all know, is that your opponent cannot activate the effects of special summon monsters in attack position. If your opponent puts a predator counter on Mpen, first, the Dragostopelia needs to be in defense mode to do this due to Mpen's continuous effect. Relevant again to something coming even later in the video, if a monster with a continuous effect is summoned, that continuous effect is alive instantly, barring the summon itself being countered. While Mpen's search won't resolve, her continuous effect is still live despite the predator counter. Now, if your opponent puts that Dragostopelia in attack mode, Mpen is still affected by its continuous effect to negate because that effect isn't activated and therefore not covered by Mpen's own floodgate effect. However, the attack position Dragostopelia will not be able to place additional counters. Let's just mention Mpen really quick, similar to evenly matched, her floodgate effect supersedes any unaffected by style of protection because she is not actually affecting the opponent's monsters, but rather the opponent's ability to take an action. And because she specifically says you cannot activate cards like the Prank Kids links that could activate and resolve under skill drain due to tributing themselves for cost, leaving the field and the sphere of influence of skill drain, cards under Mpen's floodgate cannot tribute themselves for cost to leave the field because that would mean they were activated. Next, Mpen's ignition effect to half the attack and defense of whatever she's battling is actually slightly more difficult to play around than it sounds. So damage step is a bit confusing, but I will keep it basic here. Once you hit the damage step, you can only activate three kinds of cards. First, cards and effects that explicitly negate the activation of a card or effect, something like Solemn Judgment or Strike. Something like Ash cannot be used here because it only negates the effect itself and not the activation. Next is cards and effects that directly alter the stats of a monster. Something like Forbidden Chalice or Droplet, or for the old school players out there, Shrink. And third, cards and effects that specifically say they can be used here. Now once we reach the step of during damage calculation, that list goes down to cards and effects that negate the activation of a card or effect, or cards and effects that specifically say they can be used during damage calculation. Mpen falls into that category, as does Warrock Wento, funny enough, but unrelated. So let's say you attack with Mpen into something bigger. Your opponent has droplets set. They wait and pass priority until you reach during damage calculation. You now use Mpen's effect to half whatever she's battling. They cannot use droplets here because we have reached the during damage calculation step and Droplets doesn't meet the criteria for being used in that phase. So just something cool about Mpen to be aware of. 
And the last thing I want to talk about is how your opponent can respond to Barrier Statue of the Stormwinds being summoned via the effect of Dreaming Town, or any time that it's being summoned as part of a chain at Chainlink 2 or higher. So first and foremost, in Yu-Gi-Oh, once a chain starts resolving, with very few exceptions, new effects cannot be added into the chain, and those few exceptions, if I'm remembering right, technically do not add new effects into the chain, but rather alter how the effects on the chain resolve. But in all cases, they don't activate, so it would really be more accurate to say, once a chain starts resolving, you cannot activate a new effect until the chain has completed resolving. So let's build a scenario here. You have Dreaming Town set, Barrier Statue in hand. Your opponent has Droplets, Ammo for it, and a Tyralment Shiren. Your opponent activates Shiren Chainlink 1 to attempt to summon her. You go Chainlink 2, Dreaming Town. No response. So the chain begins to resolve. After the resolution of Dreaming Town's placeholder effect on the chain, remember, Dreaming Town isn't actually considered an effect to summon, rather more or less a placeholder that directs you to summon after it resolves, you summon Barrier Statue. Now, despite your opponent having droplets, and even let's say they had a Solemn Judgment, they cannot activate either on the summon of Barrier Statue because a chain is still currently resolving with their Shiren attempting to summon itself at Chainlink 1. Now, Chainlink 1 resolves without effect, and again, remember, continuous effects like that of Barrier Statue don't activate, they just happen. So we're not breaking our rule of not being able to activate an effect mid-resolution of a chain. Now that everything has resolved, if your opponent wants, they can drop with the statue, but they will have lost out on that Shiren use for the turn. This can apply to chaining to a polymerization, instant fusion, etc. as well. This can also apply if you are summoning statue on the resolution of a Flanderese effect, provided that effect is chain link to or higher. Now, do keep in mind, if the effect that is summoning statue is chain link 1, because the Flanderese effect and Dreaming Town specifically state that you are summoning after the resolution of the effect, your opponent can use Solemn Judgment on that summon in that case, but again, it must be a chain link 1 effect for that to happen. Okay, I lied. One more, but it wouldn't be a rulings related talk on this channel if I didn't mention that you don't get Ryza's bonus effect to bounce to hand if you summon him aided by unexplored winds because, and say it with me, unexplored winds does not tribute, rather sends to grave in order to perform a tribute summon. So, hope you all enjoyed the video and that you learned something. Don't forget to drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for even more, and as always, if you want to help us out that little bit extra, check out the link in the description to grab yourself a KeysBTCG exclusive playmat, and I will catch you all later.